Programmable Logic Controllers, or PLCs, are typically used to run factory equipment, and you're probably even wearing or using something right now that was made in a factory controlled by a PLC. And somebody had to program the PLC to make that happen. In this video, we're going to use the PLC to decide which Pinewood Derby car wins the race. Let's assume that the Pinewood Derby Track Electronics has sensors wired to the PLC that tell us when the cars have crossed the finish line. Now as soon as the first car crosses the finish line, we want to turn on the light over that car's lane to indicate the winner. So it looks like our PLC needs to watch these two finish line signals and it needs to output these two light signals. We'll have the finish line wires come into the PLC on inputs X1 and X2. And we'll control the winner lights from the PLC's output terminals Y1 and Y2. Let's also assume there's a reset signal to clear the lights and get us ready for the next race. We'll have that signal come into the PLC on input X0. Now our job as a PLC programmer is to watch these finish line signals, make a decision, and then turn on one of these outputs to indicate the winner of the race, and also to use the reset to clear the lights. PLCs come in lots of different shapes and sizes. We're going to use this Do More PLC from Automation Direct because the software is free and it has a free built-in simulator so we can test our code without having to buy any hardware. If we were going to use a real PLC and not a simulated one, we would set it up like this. First you get a base. This is a nine slot base, but you can get them in several different sizes. This is one I just happen to have laying around. Then you select the processor you want. This is the Do More processor that comes with the free software and free simulator. Okay, we need some inputs to read those lane sensors, right? So we grab an input module like this one and plug it into the base. Now based on that diagram we had a second ago, we wire lane one to terminal one, lane two to terminal two, and our reset button to terminal zero. And we'll also need a wire to supply a reference signal to the sensors. Let's see, we need two outputs to turn on the lights, so we add an output module. This one has 16 outputs. We only need two of the outputs for this project, one for each light we want to turn on. From our diagram, we want to wire light one to terminal one and light two to terminal two. And again, we'll need a reference signal here for the lights. So again, if we were using a real PLC, that's how we would wire it up. The good news is, we don't have to buy and wire up a PLC to try out our program. The Do More software comes with a free simulator which looks like this. Using this, we can test our code for free. Let's see, it looks like this simulated PLC has 16 inputs, X0 through X15. Again, we're only using X0, 1, and 2, right? And when we click on these buttons, it's just like the Track Electronics sent us a signal. This X1 input is lane 1. The X2 input is lane 2, and the X0 input is our reset button. The simulated PLC also has 16 outputs, Y0 through Y15. Again, we're only using two of them, Y1 and Y2, to turn on the finish line lights. There's a bunch of other stuff here, but we don't need to worry about that for this program. Okay, so let's write our program. Go ahead and launch the software, and you should get a screen something like this. Now we want to start a new project, so we click on New. Let's give it a name. I'm just going to call it PWD for Pinewood Derby. Now you want to make sure you're connected to the Do More Simulator, and then say OK. Great, we're ready to start programming. Here we go. PLCs use something called ladder logic because it looks kind of like a ladder. Each line of code is called a rung, like a rung on a ladder. Think of this as the power, and we want to connect that power to drive an output, like a light or a motor. In our case, it's the finish line lights. Now right now, this power is running directly across this wire to the output. Well, we want to control the output based on our finish line signal, right? So we highlight this block, and we click on this contact right here. And let's give it a name. Let's call that finish one. That's the sensor that tells us when the Pinewood Derby car has crossed the finish line. Now the software needs to know which input that's connected to. So click on this guy right here, and let's see, finish one was connected to X1, right? We say OK. So now when the Pinewood Derby car crosses the finish line, this contact will close and it'll let power flow down to what? Well, we need it to flow to our finish line light, right? So click on that. And we want to set the winner light. So I'll call it winner light number one and say OK. The software wants to know what that's connected to. So winner light one is connected to what? Y1, exactly. Great. So now when the car crosses the finish line, it'll turn on light one. Let's do the same thing for lane two. We need to put a contact here. We'll call that finish two. 
The software says, what input is that connected to? Well, that's connected to X2. And he's going to set the signal at winter light 2. Again, the software wants to know what terminal that's connected to. That's connected to terminal Y2 on our PLC. And we're ready to go. Now, the only problem with this is this is not really what we want to do, is it? All this is going to do is turn on the light when the car crosses the line for both of them. We really want only one light to turn on, and we want it to be the light of the winning car, don't we? OK, well, how do we do that? Let's see. If the car crosses the line and light 2 is not lit yet, he must be the winner, right? Well, that's easy. Click right here and grab this contact right here and put winner light 2 in there. Let's try that. OK, so what this says is this contact is always closed until winter light 2 goes active. So in other words, when the car crosses the line, it'll close this switch. It'll see this switch is already closed because car 2 hasn't crossed the finish line yet, and it'll light our light. We need to do the same thing down here. If car 2 crosses the line, but light number 1 is not lit, then we need to turn on light number 2. So let's do that. Cursor right here. Use this guy. We want winter light number one now. And say OK. Well, great. This is exactly what we want. If car one crosses the finish line and light number two is not lit, then turn on light one. If car number two crosses the finish line and winter one is not lit, then turn on light two. We need to do one more thing. We need to reset these lights when the user presses the reset button. Well, again, come over here, grab a regular contact. And we want the reset line, which we assigned to x0, to reset, that's this guy right here, the two lights. We need winner 1. And here's a trick. With the cursor right there, hold down the Control key, press the down arrow, and let go of the Control key. Now we can add another light here. So we want to reset. Again, that's this guy. Winner light number two. Well, that's our whole program. This is lane one, this is lane two, and then we can reset the winner lights when we're done. This yellow line here says we haven't checked our program yet. So you hit this check mark and it verifies that everything's great. The green line means we haven't saved it, so I'm just going to save it real quick and we're ready to go. Now, normally we would download this to a PLC. We don't have a PLC, so let's bring up our simulator. Click on the simulator button right here. A little dialog comes up telling me about it. Just say OK. Say OK. And it's asking us, what do we want to do? Do we want to go online with this PLC and view our disk project? That's this guy right here. Do we want to go online and view what's currently in the PLC? No, we don't want to do that. Do we want to cancel? So we want this guy. And it's warning us. It's saying, hey, the PLC does not have this program in it yet. Yeah, we know that, so let's continue. And we're ready to go. Here's our simulator right here. Now, there's a lot of stuff here, but we really don't need very much of it. All we need is these three inputs right here, x0, 1, and 2, and the two outputs, y1 and y2, right? Now, this switch right here tells me that the PLC is in stop mode. We need to bump that up to terminal mode so we can program it. To write the program to the PLC, we just hit this button right here. We're going to take this program, hit this button, and that transferred the program down to our PLC. Let's go ahead and run our program by clicking on Run, and we should be ready to go. If the car in lane 1 comes down and trips the finish line sensor, which we know is connected to X1, what happens? Sure enough, the light connected to Y1 lights up. And then when car 2 comes down and trips his sensor, nothing happens. That's exactly right. OK, let's get rid of those guys. Let's reset our lights. Remember, that was X0. And try it again. This time, car 2 comes down. He hits his sensor. And sure enough, that light lights up saying car 2 won the race. When car 1 comes down, nothing happens. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So that's all there is to it. We now have a Pinewood Derby track controller that tells us which car won the race. What if we wanted to modify this program to control a four-lane track? How would we do that? Well. It would look a lot like this. It's the exact same program, except now we've added two more rungs of ladder to handle lane 3 and lane 4. And now each lane 
needs to check all of the other lanes before lighting its light. For example, lane one needs to check the lights two, three, and four before lighting its light, and lane four needs to check lanes one, two, and three before lighting its light. Otherwise, it's the exact same thing that we did before, isn't it? Then we have to do one more thing. The reset button needs to reset all four lanes, not just two. And that's all the logic you need to implement a four lane track. So for your project, I'm gonna challenge you to see if you can do an eight lane track controller. That wouldn't be hard at all, would it? You're just gonna add four more rungs of ladder for lanes five through eight, and you're gonna clear lights five through eight. That's it, then you have an eight lane controller. See if you can program that and test it in a simulator. Well, that's how PLC programming goes. The bigger the factory you want to monitor and control, the more rungs of ladder logic you add. And now you know how to do it. Now please understand, this was a very simple example of what a PLC can do. PLCs can do a whole lot more, but this should be enough to get you started and hopefully help you understand that maybe someday you could be programming the controllers that run our factories. Check out the resources listed on the website to learn more about programming PLCs with ladder logic. We want to thank Automation Direct for supplying the resources for this video. Automation Direct sells PLCs and just about everything else you need to automate a factory, including sensors, wire, motors, drives, push buttons, lights, tools, safety gear, servos, just about anything you can imagine. So if you want to learn more about factory automation, check out Automation Direct at automationdirect.com.